Hello, everybody. My name is Sunday Adelaja. Uh, I've been an old friend of uh, Apostle Bo Salisbury. Um, Apostle Bo, thank you so much for the privilege and opportunity to address this uh, this August gathering. And um, just a few words about um, revival, reformation, transformation. Well, the church talks a lot about these things, revival. Some people have been praying for revival now for nothing less than a hundred years. And yet it's difficult to come about revival or even transformation, which is a, a better concept. Uh, but still, it's not been easy to experience any of those. But uh, something that we often leave out is the fact that both of these, transformation, revival, or uh, reformation, are all supposed to lead to one thing to the transformation of the culture. Actually, the transformation of culture is the ultimate assignment of the church. The, 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 both the Great Commission and the teachings of Jesus point to this. For example, when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, that is talking about a complete cultural transformation right there. Because for salt to be effective, you know, salt needs to be Put into the food. Let's take a soup. Let's take a let's take soup for example. So the only way we experience the effectiveness and the and the and the purpose of salt is when we put the salt in the in the stew or in the soup. And but how does the transformation? How does the effect come about? The effect come about by the salt dissolving itself in the stew or in the soup, when that happens, the salt must go, must become one and the same with the, with the soup. It is it, that, 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 uh, that uh, what do you call it? Emergence or that, uh, that solution or that uh, mix of the salt in the soup is, um, is, 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 is liking to transformation. Because what happens is that a soup that was tasteless before, thanks to the entrance and the introduction of the salt into it, transforms itself into this delicious, tasty food. Because it has, it has embedded the whole, uh, the whole soup into itself. It has transformed it. That is the perfect example. This is what salt does to our form of food, where we put it. It goes in there and affects and changes the whole thing entirely. And so this is what the church is supposed to be. And the Bible is saying, this is, Jesus was saying, you, this is who the church is supposed to be. This is who we are all supposed to be. We're supposed to go into the culture, get ourselves emerge in the in the culture we we we, we get ourselves uh, mixed up in the culture we we become one in, with the culture we embed the we we, we cause the culture to embed our nature and and that is how we transform the society so the one of the reasons why even the big revivals only few of them have been able to transform the culture is that the church goes in into the culture and build the church. It's, it's like um, putting uh, salt in the sachet and putting the, the and close the sachet and then put that uh, sachet in the soup in this soup without opening it. So we we, we have these churches, these buildings uh, where people come in. They converge in the buildings. We praise. We experience this revival, and uh, we say praise God. We shout. We go home, but the society remains the same. So the, bo the the bottom line is that this the the instruction, the way it was given to us by God by Jesus, is that you don't need to just go and isolate yourself or put yourself in a special uh, building to to say you are representing God. No, you need to go to where the people are. Just like the soul penetrates the society, you need to penetrate the society, real world, where people are. And when you go there, you need to become a part and parcel of that society. 
when you become a part of that society, then your values begin to transform the society into the image of the kingdom so that the society will begin to look like the kingdom of God looks. This is the whole idea of revival. If a revival doesn't bring about transformation, it's just Christian entertainment. I remember when a few years ago there was a certain revival in America and uh, people were laughing and laughing revival, whatever it is. Uh, and this was big among the charis some charismatic uh, world faith movement. And, you know, and I mean, it was a big thing. And then I came into the city uh, to, to come and see this revival. And it was, I could see and I could testify that it was a real genuine power of God that was in operation. But then when I took the taxi and I took a cab and... Um, uh, they didn't even know what, that anything was going on in that city. The unbelievers were not, they were not even aware of it because it's not that message is not penetrating. It's not permeating. That's the word. It's not permeating the society. So we, so the whole idea of culture, of revival, all transformation, or uh, 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 reformation is to bring about transformation. Transformation is the purpose. And this is the only measurement we should use to measure ourselves as ministers. Am I bringing about transformation of my society? If the society is not changing, it says you are the light of the world. If uh, if uh, if my light is not causing darkness to 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 be removed, to disappear, to dissipate, and to 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 back out, then I don't have the light. It's as simple as that. So light is supposed to bring about some effect that will cause everybody to say, oh, the darkness has disappeared or it has been reduced. We, the measurement that we should be using to measure our success as ministers is not how many members we have. Like we are used to have a great number of people, but that is not enough. I, I used to have, I mean, when we had 15,000 people, this is when I came to the uh, revelation of the kingdom of God because I discovered that we had 15,000 of, uh, of thousand people in Kiev, Ukraine, but the society was not even aware we were there. They knew that maybe sometimes they know we were there, with they thought there were some crazy people. But until we began to break ourselves down, to penetrate into all spheres of the society, strategically doing this, sending people purposefully into every sphere of life, only after that, we began to really experience real transformation. So, so we should not be mentioning our success by how many people we have in our churches. We should not even be mentioning our, our success by how long our, our revival is taking place in our buildings. Now, or we measuring ourselves by you know, how much property we have. Those things are good, but they are supposed to facilitate and, and bring about transformation of the values, the value system of the society. And this is why, where I think that we all need to learn from uh, Apostle Bowles, uh, Salisbury, because his book on culture is, is the cry of the moment. I think every church needs to have that book because that is the measurement by which we should all measure, measure our success as ministers. And I hope this blesses you a little bit. <laughs> have a wonderful gathering. God bless. Bye.